Today, I'm gonna show y'all how to find this snake in the wild, the rosy boa. Let's get straight into it. We about to head over to the spot now. It's gonna take about like 30 to 40 minutes. It's a bit of a drive for me. It's kind of far away, but hey, close enough still, all right? Let's go find a rosy boa. Let's get it. While we wait out this red light, let's talk about where you need to go. And it's pretty simple. Basically, just look up the range map of Rosie Bows first, then use Google Maps and pick out any rocky areas within the range, and just drive there. After getting to the habitat, you can start, but before that, get yourself some boots. Get yourself some boots, alright? You know? We ain't trying to get bit by no rattlesnakes out here, alright? Because there's rattlesnakes in this habitat, where the Rosie Bows are, you know? Let's like, let's like not get bit, alright? So put on some boots, you know? Get yourself right. Once that's out the way, start walking to rock piles because that's where you're gonna find the rosy bows. And be prepared to do a lot of walking. Hope you got a lot of stamina. Oh yeah, and when you walk into this habitat, it is okay to step on plants. But try not to do too much, right? Like for example, this shrub, but don't like kick it down, you know? Just try and like, you know, move, maneuver your feet around the shrubbery. Cause you gotta remember, these plants, this is like also an important habitat for a lot of creatures, including, you know, well not for, well, not for the rosy bows themselves, it's a good habitat for the rosy bows food, you know, like mice, rodents. So like, just keep that in mind, all right? Try not to step on the plants too much. Once you get to your rock piles, you can start flipping them over. Rock on top of rock is often the best for boas. But here's a few things to keep in mind. While you're flipping a rock, you could, you know, without noticing, you could be putting a hand near a rattlesnake. Cause rattlesnakes, especially during like, you know, the colder months, or like not colder months, but like, uh, 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 times like spring, you know, because that's also a, a good, the best time to find the bows. They often be sitting kind of like halfway out, basking in the sun, just a little bit, of, just like you know, a couple inches away from the cracks. So, while you're flipping the rocks over, and you know, like you know, near big uh, rock overhangs, just you know, watch your hands. Real quick, I also want to talk about something else. This is this is something called moisture resealing. So basically, let's say you flipped over a rock, right? It's like kind of wedged into the dirt. So like you know. You flip it, you know, you flip it, nothing underneath there, okay? Make sure there's no small animals underneath, you know, as always. And flip it back over. The thing is what you want to do, you kind of want to kind of, you kind of just want to like preserve the microhabitat that's like uh, within. So what you could do to create this, it's called a moisture reseal. Basically, before you flip the back, uh, you, before you flip the rock, you know, <coughs> um, the dirt around the rock created like a sealed habitat, kept a lot of humidity in, the humidity in which is important to a lot of, you know, to the wildlife. So what you want to do is that once you flip a rock, a rock back over that's been lodged into the dirt, and, and you know, keep in mind, you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to do this with every rock, right? Just like the ones that are wedged into the dirt. But anyways, just to preserve the habitat so that, you know, animals in the future could still live underneath it, you can like pat down the dirt along the sides, make sure that the, the moisture is preserved inside, make sure that the rock is sealed the way back it was before. You can even stop on it a little bit just to like really wedge the rock right back into place exactly how you found it before. But yeah, make sure y'all do this with the ant with the any of the rocks that you flip over or into the dirt, you know. Once you get the animals right, <laughs> every time you flip a rock over, it does disturb the habitat temporarily. So the best thing you could do is kinda of get it right back to the way it was. And that make that that makes sure that you can find animals underneath the you know the rocks in the future. Now do make sure you have some persistence. It does take time to find these animals and not every rock will have a bow underneath. I think I flipped over like a hundred rocks before I found mines, but eventually it will happen because after almost three hours of hiking. Oh! oh. Definitely one of the coolest forms of wildlife I've ever encountered in my life. This is the coastal rosy bow. I'll put the scientific name up top. One of two types of bows native to the United States. Okay, I mean, technically there's four species, but it's basically two species of rubber boa and two species of rosy boa. So, you know, two types. My first ever rosy boa that I ever caught, I'm gonna remember this one, all right? It is a female, I'm gonna remember her. I could name her Rosie, but that's too cliche. We'll call her Sharkeisha instead. All right, Sharkeisha, time to go back to your, uh, your rocky domain and whatnot. Yeah. It was very fun interacting with this with this creature. It's a privilege to interact with such cool wildlife, you know. Look at this cool little chocolate brown color. All right, hurry your ass up, goddamn! 
You're moving too slow. I know Rosie Bells are slow, but she. Want a little bit more? There you go. And now we got the long walk back. And it wasn't long in terms of length, because like I think I only hiked like around a mile. But it was uphill, and I had to go through like a bunch of vegetation. So, alright, y'all. That's gonna be the end of the video. You know, we found the animal that we were looking for, the rosy boa. And yeah, that's gonna be a wrap. I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day or night, depending where y'all at. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.